Okay, we've completed some of our preliminary sanding now, and you can, you can see that a, a good majority of the texture pattern that was left by the peel ply has been sanded away, uh, which makes low spots uh, really well defined, uh, such as here. That's still the, the peel ply texture, just in the bottom of the low spot. Uh, if you look at our template, you'll see that it's not really all that much that's going to need to be filled there. Um, so the, the way to deal with that at this point is, is just keep sanding and when, when everything is ready, uh, the lowest areas can be filled with some filler. The other areas that there's just a little bit of the peel ply pattern showing, uh, those will generally fill with some finished coats of resin that we'll put on that will allow for a, a nice final finish sand. Over here on the side, you can see it's got a little ways to go still, but we've started working down towards uh, being a, a flat surface projecting from the canopy out into the skin that carries up into here and then it's finally starting to turn into an inside radius uh, which will remove a little bit more of this pre or the peel ply texture in this low spot uh, once we start getting some of the, the final contour established. Right here along the, the bottom tape, you can still see areas where uh, there's still some resin uh, and even a little bit of glass bridging out onto the tape. So that shows you a little bit of the difference of what you're looking for. Here's scuff tape and we don't want to sand any farther. And then here's some resin and even some glass right along the edge. And that will require a little bit more sanding, uh, totally free up the tapes so that the first layer of tape can be removed and then we'll be uh, working a little bit more precisely as we get near the end uh, finishing that edge. Okay so we're starting to get really close here uh, with our our shaping sanding. Uh, you can still see that there's definitely a low spot we ended up with with here that it's not, not extreme, and we'll just use a little bit of filler to fill that uh, out net to the, the surface shape that we want, because um, we've still got good integrity of the fiberglass layup at that point. Uh, and that's the primary purpose of this, of course, you know, is to, to bond the windscreen in place and, and hold it there. So, been sanding with a just a small flat sanding block over here in the in the flat areas on the sides uh, and the, to reemphasize what I kind of hinted at before um, because we are going to put some sealing uh, coats of epoxy at least one probably two uh, depending on what the surface finish looks like and and you can determine that on your own uh, also depending on how your layup goes and I'll be showing you later uh, how we're making a decision on uh, determining how many coats to put on. But because we are going to do that, the actual surface texture, surface finish at this point is not important. I'm sanding right here with, with 40 grit sandpaper, which is pretty aggressive, uh, but it reduces the work time. And if that works for you, and if you're able to sand carefully right next to tape, and see, I can even sand on the tape slightly as long as I'm not using lots of pressure and it won't sand through. Uh, if you're able to do that, you really don't need to change to any finer grit. But I was recommending changes for somebody who's not experienced because the finer grit will take a little bit longer but it's much less aggressive and lo much lower risk as far as um, sanding through the surface of the tape. 
Uh, I've done quite a bit of this, so I, I can uh, be pretty cautious in my sanding. I'm sanding right down to the, the tape layer. And if, and if it does scrape through the first layer tape a little bit in, in a few places, uh, that's not a problem. It just makes the tape a little bit more difficult to remove, but, but not a problem. And then we still have our other layer of tape that we're going to finish sand down to. That I probably will go to a bit finer uh, sandpaper uh, just to make sure that I don't go through that one because uh, on this side, of course, is where the canopy is and we don't want to sand through the tape at all uh, because it will scratch it and that's very difficult to remove and repair. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, just a little bit more on this and we'll be pulling the first layer of tape and then doing some final finish sanding down to the level of that last one layer that's still remaining and then we will have a uh, shaped fiberglass uh, fairing that is only about the thickness of one piece of tape which uh, is a pretty nice transition uh, from it to the windscreen and then once the last piece of tape on the forward edge is removed some fine sandpaper can be used to to actually feather that down to a net transition to where there's, there's no step on it at all okay one other point I wanted to re-emphasize uh, that I talked about earlier about using sanding tools, but do not try and do any of this uh, final shaping uh, and sanding into shape with just your bare hands. Always be using a tool for whatever uh, surface it is that you're working with. We showed you earlier the, the four inch radius uh, sanding block that was made that will do approximately this area across the front, then it requires really no, uh, no skill or eye in getting the shape correct. You just sand to uh, a net fit of that sanding block. Once we get over here on the sides where it's flat, don't try and use anything big. Just use a, a, a little small block that will fit within the space easily and, and that you can, you can work between the areas that are taped. And you're trying to sand to where you can tell that it's sanding on the whole surface and you don't really have a big bulge there uh, from the layers of glass uh, where they built up want to try and have a you know just a nice gentle transition from the face of the, the skin for the canopy frame and blend into the glass and then terminate onto the windscreen. Most challenging area is probably the zone between the two that there is no constant shape. It's constantly changing from uh, flat or a very very slight outside radius to when you get to about here to an inside radius and that you just have to use uh, either your radius sanding block that we're using here and start moving it in a little bit more of a, a circular motion or you can angle it slightly to change the radius uh, that's actually going to be produced onto the surface. And then just kind of keep looking at it from an edge view and uh, looking at what the shape is and just try and, try and get a uh, continuous smooth transition from the inside radius to the outside radius. Okay, so we've finished uh, the main contour sanding that we're going to do. Uh, it's not necessarily easy to see in the video unless you get the camera at all, uh, the ideal angles, but we've got a really nice, uh, relatively flat transition between the, the canopy glass and the skin here on the sides, and then it slowly transitions into an inside radius and a, a very nice radius that goes tangent at each edge. 
Uh, one thing I'll point out is, if you notice, you can kind of start seeing some of the gray and to varying amounts depending on how much got sanded. Uh, but that's one of the benefits also to just the one layer of gray on the back side. Uh, it gives you a really good indicator when you're down to the last layer of fiberglass out at the edges, which that's where it's going to be very, very thin, where it's just feathering out uh, to match up with the, the surfaces you're transitioning to. So uh, that's a good indicator um, for doing the finished sanding. You can watch for the gray and then you know you're getting really close. So we've removed, we've removed the second or outer layer of tape. So we're now down to just one layer of tape. There is a little bit of an edge there. Uh, the, for aesthetics, when it's all finished, we want to have that at an absolute minimum because there is going to be some buildup from our finished layer of resin uh, and primer and, and paint when it gets painted. Uh, so what we're going to do now is just a little bit more sanding with some finer grit uh, using 150. We can still use our four inch radius block here in the center, so we're still maintaining a uniform contour, uh, just using that as a tool to maintain the shape. So this, this will reduce the thickness just a very small amount uh, overall, and, and then take us down to the same level of the tape on the edges. Once again, around here on the sides, you'll have to use a, a flat block but the, the 150 grit, it'll just kind of scuff and degloss the tape when you're finally down to rubbing on the tape surface. And that's how you know you've gone uh, far enough. Now we have all the shaping done and we want to remove all the vinyl tape from the bottom edge and displace it a little bit just to protect the metal. It doesn't need to be scratched deeply and we leave the one layer on the top as we talked about before and then now the shaping is done we want to feather in this bottom edge so that it has a smooth transition from the surface of the metal up onto this fillet and we still have our low spots so we're going to do a little bit more filling we'll also do the uh, another resin brush coat over the surface and so we put this other masking tape here just to be able to peel it off after we've applied the resin. Now we've added our filler in the low spots to bring it up to the uh, surface that we want and also put on a heavy brush coat of resin. Not so heavy that it sags off, but heavy enough that it will stay in place, but fill most of the pinholes and leave us with a nice surface that we can finish sand. And we put the masking tape on beforehand so we can peel that off, pulling it back over. And that will leave us with a nice edge. It's not real hard. It'll enable us to sand it easily to a feather edge. Okay, we're getting down near the end of the dreaded sanding. Uh, things are starting to look pretty good here. I uh, just wanted to point out a few little details for you to be watching for. Uh, you can see uh, the areas that were filled with uh, the micro balloon resin mixture. It's got a little bit of a whitish appearance to it. You can see these a uh, little bit darker areas in there. There's some low spots that still exist uh, that we're going to have to fill just tiny little areas. Uh, the important thing as you get down near the end is that you sand to a shape, not sand to a finish. So it, it's really easy to want to just keep sanding and make those little low spots go away 
but then uh, all you're doing is destroying your contour uh, and when you finally finish paint that type of thing will easily show up uh, in a nice shiny paint surface so you need the sand to the shape you want not to the finish you want if you end up with some low spots uh, then you just have to go back and fill one more time what we're going to do here uh, to make it a little bit uh, shorter path to being finished is uh, we will take some rough sandpaper and sand in these low spots uh, to improve adhesion and we're going to just use a little bit of auto body filler uh, commonly referred to as bondo filler just to fill the tiny little areas for a small amount of filling it's it's totally stable and uh, it'll never be detectable under the, the paint finish and it cures quickly so we can get right back to sanding and, and get things finished up. So kind of as a recap, uh, we applied filler uh, where we knew we had low spots and, and over the entire area uh, kind of spreading it on to make sure that we've got uh, any you know larger pinholes filled and then after that had set up a little bit uh, a final finish coat of resin or two uh, with tape applied along the edges so that it could be pulled uh, as soon as the resin was uh, applied that made it really easy to finish sand uh, down to the, this tape surface the forward edge is now sanded to a, a feathered edge that feathers out and blends out onto the skin of the canopy frame. Uh, so with just a little bit of filler primer and some final finish sanding at paint prep later on, that transition will actually be indistinguishable and it will just blend right out onto the skin. Okay, so it looks like we're finally there. Uh, we finished our final contour sanding uh, previously and found a few slight low spots uh, which we've subsequently uh, filled with some body filler that's what the, the slightly different color is here uh, nice thing about using that for just a small amount of finished filling is uh, cures really quickly so uh, you can even keep spotting in areas that you find and not have to spend a lot of time waiting uh, for the, the filler to cure uh, like you do if you use the micro and epoxy it's going to have to sit overnight but that, that's still a, a viable choice uh, if you choose to do so uh, as long as you're not in a hurry and you're willing to just put some on and then wait and sand some more the next day uh, but this sands out uh, nicely uh, and seems to be about the same hardness as the, the microfiller, uh, so uh, it will, will sand evenly. So now we've finished sanded uh, with some finer sandpaper uh, just to, to get a smooth surface for putting some final filler primer on. Uh, in the process of doing that, sanded to a fet, rolled nice feather edge coming out onto the, the skin of the canopy frame and we're ready to put on some filler primer which will uh, basically be used as a sanding surface for just the last little bit of, of surface finish uh, as far as irregularities go. Uh, you, you, at the point we're at right now you may still have just some little tiny points that you, you feel some variation you know with like fingertip pressure running around on the surface. Uh, that's what filler primer is for, um, for doing the, the final finish work. Because it sands really easily and it'll take care of just the, the few thousandths of irregularity here and there. Okay, here we are at the end. It's time to do our happy dance. No more sanding left. Uh, we've got a, a nice finish on the, the canopy to canopy frame uh, intersection. Uh, got some primer that's been finished sanded uh, so that we feather out uh, to a feather edge uh, onto the glass and onto the uh, skin of the canopy frame. Uh, w when doing the finished sanding, uh, your, your fingertips are a really good tool. Uh, they're, they're sensitive 
uh, to feel imperfections. And if, if you can feel something uh, with your fingertips, when it finally gets painted, uh, it, will, it will show up five times uh, as much as, as what you think you're even feeling. Uh, so anything that you can uh, detect that's there, um, you know, work, work at removing. You might even be in a position where uh, after doing some finished sanding with the, the filler primer, uh, that you have to go back and, and add some more filler primer in a, in a few year, few areas, but uh, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Uh, depending on what the path is you're going to be using for finished paint, um, you maybe don't have to have it absolute perfect because some finish work uh, by the, the painter if you're going to be using somebody else to, to do your, your paint finish for you. Uh, that's work that they would do, you know, as, as long as you've got it pretty close. So we are going to be uh, reapplying some tape so that we're, we're sealing all the canopy, leaving the, the plastic vinyl in place. Um, it, it's great protection for the canopy. Uh, just, just dust settling on it uh, in your shop while you're finishing uh, the airplane build is enough to get the thing really scratched up uh, just by trying to clean that dust off without causing any damage. So we, we leave the vinyl on until the first time somebody needs to get in the airplane and fly it, basically. So we'll be putting some tape back on to, to protect this ex exposed edge, uh, but wanted to give you a, a look of what the finished product was. And I hope this video has been helpful in uh, taking you through the steps of the process.